Welcome to another walkthrough practice problem video by Physicademy.com. This problem focuses on analyzing snapshot and history plots of a traveling wave to calculate wavelength, wave number, speed, wave equation, and wave type. Let's read the problem statement and analyze it together. The following plots are a snapshot and history graph of a traveling wave. In part A, what is the period of the wave? In part B, what is the wave number of the wave? In part C, what is the speed of the wave? In part D, write an equation for the wave displacement as a function of position, x, and time, t. In part E, can you tell if the wave is transverse or longitudinal? The figure on the left is the plot of the amplitude of the displacement of particles as a function of the x-axis at time zero. This plot is like a snapshot of waves on top of a lake or like a picture of the waves of a lake. Now, imagine we are only tracking the particle at point x equals 1 meter. Over time this particle oscillates like this. If we track the oscillation's amplitude of this particle over time, we end up having the right-hand side plot. We call this plot of amplitude versus time a history graph. Alright, let's focus on part A and find the period of the wave. To find the period of the oscillations, we need to focus on the amplitude versus time plot. As a side note, in physics, tau is the symbol of the period of an oscillation, and its unit is in the unit of time. In this problem, the unit of time is in seconds, so the unit of the period is in seconds too. Alright, let's count how many periods in 4 seconds have happened. So, we have 5 and 3 quarters of periods in 4 seconds. Let's write down this in a mathematical format. Here, the time passed, delta t, is 4 seconds. The number sign is the number of periods in this 4 second, which is 5 and 3 quarters. Tau is the period. After plugging in the numbers, it turns out the period is 16 divided by 23 seconds. For now, I'm going to leave it as it is, but you could divide and round this number. Regardless, this is an acceptable answer for this part. In part B, we are asked to calculate the wave number. For the wave number, we need to analyze the displacement versus x-axis plot. As a reminder, we call this plot a snapshot of a wave. I'm going to start by writing the wave number equation. K is the wave number. Lambda is the wavelength. So, to find the wave number, first, we need to calculate the wavelength. By analyzing the snapshot of the wave plot, we see three wavelengths in 4 meters. Let's write this down in a mathematical format. Here, delta x is 4 meters. The number sign is the number of wavelengths in 4 meters, or 3 here. After plugging in the numbers, for the wavelength, we get 4 meters divided by 3. After plugging the wavelength back into the wave number equation, we get 3 pi divided by 2. The unit of the wave number is 1 over meters or inverted meters. Again, you could find the final numerical value, but I'll leave it as it is. In part C, we are asked to calculate the speed of the propagation of the wave. To do so, we start with speed equals the wavelength times frequency relationship. From part B, we found the wavelength equals 4 meters divided by 3. We don't have the frequency of the oscillations yet, but we know frequency is the invert of the period, and from part A, we know period or tau is 16 seconds divided by 23. Plugging the numbers in, we get 23 hertz divided by 16 for the frequency of the oscillations. Remember, hertz is the short way of saying inverted seconds. Now we can go back and plug this frequency into the original equation for the speed, and we get about 1.92 meters per second for the speed of the propagation of the wave. In part D, we are asked to find the wave equation. The general format of a wave equation is this. 
starting with the maximum amplitude or a max, it is 2 meters from both plots. Then if k, the wave number, from part b, we know k is 3 pi divided by 2 inverted meters. For the find of the wave number k, we check the snapshot plot on the left. We have a negative sign plot here, so a k, the wave number, has to be negative. Let's plug in the numerical values so far we have. Alright, we can calculate the omega or angular frequency by dividing 2 pi by the period from part A. The angular frequency is 23 pi divided by 8 radians per second. After plugging in the numerical value of angular frequency, we have the final wave equation of our wave. For part E. No, we cannot say this is a transverse or longitudinal wave with the provided information. Because the problem statement only has the snapshot and history plot of the wave. Neither of these plots tells us the direction of the oscillations. Thank you very much for watching this video. Please check our website, physicademy.com, or our YouTube channel for more practice problems. If you found it helpful, by subscribing to our channel, you can provide the best support for our work.